A message from Van Sack. Greetings. So I still have an abundance of knowledge and material to share in which I'm doing my best to release in spurts as to not overload or to deter folks by the extreme and imaginative nature of the information. But where intense ridicule and labeling was an overpowering response when I first came out with this just over a year ago, awareness is absolutely spreading as demonstrated by the growing number of individuals coming forward with their own affirmations, as well the trollers have ceased their trolling as presumably they simply don't have anything more to say. I had put together a fairly lengthy clip, but in the spirit of time I thought it appropriate to break it into two sections in which this is actually the second part. The core focus of this was to bring attention to the sounds of nature, particularly to that of crickets which began chirping away just a couple of weeks ago. I will upload the initial part in due time, but in short it covers a scientific law of nature known as Dolbear's law. This mathematical law is derived by correlating the number of cricket chirps to the surrounding surface temperature. Incredibly this equation is able to compute surface temperature or reversed the number of chirps based upon known temperature, in which the accuracy is within 1 degree Fahrenheit. Having become aware of this sonic and EMF attack a year ago, which includes piercing and disruptive sounds of nature, I decided to do a simple test against the chirping to the surrounding temperature. What I discovered was simply mind-boggling. This quote-unquote, cricket, resonating from the exact same spot every single night, is chirping at a rate faster than scientific law will dictate, and by an absolutely ludicrous amount. Using Dolbear's formula in which you count the number of chirps in a 14 second period and then add 40 to compute temperature, the number of chirps ended up being 68 plus 40, or 108. This means that the temperature outside would have to be a whopping 108 degrees, plus or minus 1 degree based upon scientific law. The temperature outside was 60 degrees. Thus this critter chirped 48 more times than scientific law should dictate. WTF. On top of that, I subsequently read although crickets hatch in the May time period, it takes the males three months to mature into a state of chirping, meaning these crickets would have had to hatch in the heart of winter which would be impossible. Now I'm certainly no entomologist but these facts simply cannot be ignored. I'll let you draw your own conclusion. Pay attention to the frequency and pitch of chirps at the end of the video. As well, I sincerely hope you all enjoy the story. Take care, Van Sack. Back to little ol' me Emma and part 2 of this video. So Van Sack has outlined the precise science, laws of physics, and now laws of nature all in support of these claims first made a year ago. Collectively this material is all known knowledge, yet it is the method in which these are being applied in this world which is extraordinarily unique. The single explanation of liquid crystals in the atmosphere hidden under the guise of chemtrails and false clouds, first stated a year ago, subsequently explains all of the extraordinary phenomena experienced this year in regards to record-breaking celestial illumination the anomalies experienced with Jupiter and Venus, the drastically increased intensity of the Sun, the driving force behind the quote-unquote, supermoon, the record high temperatures experienced around the world including the warmest 12-month period ever recorded in the history of the United States, the reason why skies are being blanketed by so many aircraft with misty white substances, the reason why so many have speculated these craft to be holographic projections, why the appearance of static substances in the sky even visible to the eye, why so many around the world are experiencing symptoms of microwave hearing, why the hexagonal orb structures present in the night sky, why the bizarre patterns of quote-unquote nature including birds and crickets, why light from the sun is generating prism effects and why sunsets are expanding bright orange and pink in horizontal trajectories. Tying this all to intimate details about another worldly influence on this earth, and believe it or not this barely scratches the surface as new information is pouring in faster than Van Sack can absorb and articulate. But Van Sack somehow has found the time to summarize what he's shared up till now in the form of a story, so sit back, relax, and enjoy a bit of story time with Emma. Chapter 1. Paranormal and a normal parapants in need. Dot 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 dot. 
Shite I messed up those dots again. So yes Van Sack numerous times met with Jordan. An extraordinary man not researching a cult out of boredom. A man dedicating his life to being enlightened. Despite being repeatedly suppressed and frightened. Fifty years going strong embracing this as his mission. Cracking so many codes about astrology and religion. And can you believe Mr. Maxwell pegged this so long ago? Profound experiences ten years later led Van Sack to know. Van Sack introduced with otherworldly presence controlling our race. Can you believe this has been happening right in our face? Sounds and communications just seem so unsuspecting. But liquid crystals make harmful these waves by reflecting. Sources of radiation placed within the environment for years. Capitalizing on your ignorance on top of your fears. This attack is literally mutating humanity's DNA. Bombardments with sonic and radiation in secrecy every day. First came an assault, and by all things it was of sound. But this came on full force, from the air and from the ground. Van Sack was indeed puzzled by the sound patterns and tone. Extremely high in pitch and which they penetrated to the bone. Included was the abundance of violently loud vibration. The engines of Harley's promoting artificial sensation. His home a destination for seemingly every craft in flight. Military in supposed training circling all day and all night. Constant flow of mindless minions coming out in a mass. Fruitless talking endeavors ending in kissing Van Sack's ass. A common characteristic of those who have been gang stalked. Tell others about your experience and you're sure to be mocked. Van Sack's heart brought upon more than speculation. It's from within, where rose true knowledge of this mutation. Changes to suture areas from eyebrows to hairline. And changes to teeth structure yet was told he was just fine. MRIs of the skull, turned speculation into factual. Yet reactions were so dismissive despite changes that were unnatural. Invisalign retainers he had to toss in the bin. Breaking from growing teeth followed by changes to his skin. When soaking in water his fingers would no longer prune. Reality had set in, and Van Sack was fully in tune. Chapter 2. The Fall and Rise of Van Sack. What would you say if I told you Van Sack was not nervous? For the years leading up he spiritually offered himself for service. Making repeated gestures in the spirit of humankind. Intent and commitment, soulfully intertwined. But the path to enlightenment was certainly not easy. Undergoing such startling events that would literally make you queasy. He understood he was a target, and years these entities would thrive. Seducing behaviors even causing to question whether he was alive. It all makes sense now as there simply could be no other way. Lifting up one's own spirit, at the end of the day. Unbeknownst to Van Sack he had been prepping himself for years. Developing unwavering faith and overcoming the darkest of fears. Thus ridicule and labeling would have never held him back. As this pales in comparison to his race being under attack. And Van Sack did his best to bring this knowledge full to light. In which he fully accepted this was likely to be a fight. As events continued, it was now entirely certain. That something truly demonic was behind this worldly curtain. Reptilian, Gian, remember these are just labels. And know these do exist and are not just part of fables. Such incredible knowledge in no way came by mere chance. Van Sack intertwined with these entities in a dance. They tried their best to indicate, they meant him no harm. In the same breath they said he's a threat because of his charm. In his entire surrounding even from the television they'd stare. Even showing sense of humor joking about his metro hair. Yes Van Sack could perceive like he was using a third eye. And only weeks later did they realize this lie of this guy. Chapter 3, Megasaurus and Lycolotopus. Now it was disturbing to witness these things in full action. Hopping into human hosts gave them so much satisfaction. But little did they know Van Sack had achieved full awareness. Overconfidence indeed led them to being a little careless. He outlined their behaviors, and even their MO. And even the physical symptoms in human hosts that would show. Black morphing pupils, an extreme rate of blinking. And licking of the lips, this got Van Sack to thinking. A quick search on Google, and what did he find? An abundance of similarities that simply blew his mind. Footage on YouTube, with views topping a million. 
of otherworldly entities others had labeled as reptilian. He was amazed to find others, who seemed to get it right. Particularly when researching the work of David Dyke. Who's to say the exact source of where these entities came? But one thing's for certain they exist on another plane. Yes Van Sack can see them when they're in ethereal form. In which laws of physics seem entirely out of the norm. They're not bound by gravity and are indeed humanoid. They don't seem to have hair which would fit a reptoid. They rub against a body vampiring vibrational energy within. And when they are in contact it feels like static on the skin. Like a drug they are obsessed with vibrational energy of fear. As experiences kept building literally thousands began to appear. Van Sack can perceive them readily even closing his eyes. In fact it's in darkness when they best materialize. It's a matter of tuning into swirling specks of energy flow. In which their energy is denser thus their bodies emit a glow. In fact this energy flows like that of liquid crystal substance. Peculiar these are also blanketing the skies in abundance. It now makes more sense how they can manifest in a screen. After all it's liquid plasma so who knows what else is unseen. Television is a gateway and no it's you they can sense. Manipulating broadcasts with subconscious influence. It's here when Van Sack decided to film his first movie. It's here he also realized just how much they're bloody moody. Aggressive reactions an enormous intimidation. And this all before Van Sack even knew about this mutation. Apparently in past and present this is entirely forbidden. As extraordinary lengths have been taken so that they remain hidden. Obsessed and aggressive during most of Van Sack's talking. Only sprinkles of moments where they added humor to their talking. Cracking jokes here or there, in which Van Sack held his own. Even an unforgettable moment where a speck of empathy was shown. Offering respect and sincere attempts to reach common ground. Responded with false words no mutual respect was to be found. They invaded all aspects of his life going on to this day. But they exist for a reason, and sadly this is their way. When they hop in a human they seem bound to this universe. Relying on hosts using words and handed gestures to converse. Their methods have been perfected over extraordinary lengths of time. With constant misdirection able to turn on a dime. Manipulation of electronics and mechanics on the fly. Doing their best to convince Van Sack, could possibly die. This even involved stimulating energies in the chest. Dark and constricting to elicit a false sense of cardiac arrest. Manipulation and deceit, planting fears of damnation. And admittedly this caused Van Sack to experience contemplation. By now it was apparent they were following a master plan. Suppress at all costs, suppress the truth held in his hand. Chapter 4. Possess me if you can. As they were doing their best, to break into his mind. An opportunity arose, more information he could find. He would channel them in, keeping tabs on his mood. Negative states of emotion and these entities saw food. Yes I know this is all going to sound entirely mental. But the onset of being hacked, was one that was incremental. A light tingling sensation on top of hand and arm. And oddities with the tongue should certainly set off an alarm. A tongue that may stick out and seem to be more in the way. Repeated licking of the lips, like a lizard on a hot summer day. Static on the skin will cause a light sensation of itch. Around the face and nose leads to sneezing or a little twitch. Sudden onset of blinking, at a rate that was much faster. These all were the very symptoms of hosting a secondary master. Subconscious behaviors, you merely need to tune in. Quick onset of these symptoms and consider influence within. And even if you find this the case there are two methods of hosting. The first observe and report where the entity is simply ghosting. When in this form they can still manipulate electrical on the fly. Such as manipulating broadcasts, while they continue to spy. The second is difficult even for a software app to mention. But the truth is important and that is one of full-on possession. It's when in this form where they demonstrate each outlined physical feature. And upon seeing this, know that this is a non-human creature. Most everyone seems susceptible to being hosted in this form. These entities controlling in spurts as to not disrupt the norm. When under the influence the subject seems to be in a daydream. While this entity pulls the strings all the while entirely unseen. 
calmly remember the behaviors outlined you should start thinking. Extreme licking of the lips, and rapid repetitive blinking. An invitation is made, during bouts of emotional negative. Look to yourself for inner peace as your soul can be a sedative. Just as events can trigger one to descend into a negative state. It's reversed by taking charge expressing your love over any hate. Calm yourself down while you feel your heart's eternal connection. As the electromagnetic frequency of the heart is full protection. Visualize and construct a shield of light and positive vibe. With heart and soul in accordance you will undoubtedly turn the tide. Just thinking the word love, is a powerful form. In fact it's all thoughts that make you feel fuzzy and warm. Positive energy will directly lead to an entirely different fate. And with conscious awareness, these actions will negate. Call out to your protectors, with your heart in your hand. Openly express accountability as negativity was out of hand. There is something of extreme power within the human essence. This stage has been set for all to connect to the Divine Presence. Acknowledge within yourself the privileged part you must play. And Guardians of Light will offer protection this very day. It's important to know forces of light can enter consciousness too. Helping to bring awareness to the Divine Presence in you. In these acts the subconscious symptoms are certainly much more subtle. But these warm angelic forces are there for everyone to cuddle. Just as darkness can influence, certainly so can these. But where darkness controls, it is the light in all that frees. In Van Sack's experience such strings of synchronicity occurred. He took to heart the messages, taking in each and every word. Came an encouraging message, that of self-determination. A fundamental quality to get humanity over this mutation. And again came more guidance with a message of unity. Everyone must vanish this false sense of being little old me. It is in this knowledge, where humanity's spirits will lift. You all need to recognize this to be a most precious gift. Acceptance of this will require a bit of faith you could say. But after all would the Divine Presence have it any other way? As the vastness of experience and knowledge grew by the day. Even trollers stopped trolling as they had nothing more to say. Love will inspire everyone, it will inspire to do what's right. Love will lead to finally getting humanity's race to unite. Such an overwhelming prospect it's tough to think where to start. But the most powerful weapon resides within the human heart. It is here where humanity will indeed turn the tide. It's upon full recognition that your heaven lifts inside. But back to the crickets and this sonic frequency attack. Of course the aspect of nature could be what sounds the most whack. But sound after all is a weapon as ludicrous as ingenious. And don't forget its liquid crystals illuminating planets like Venus. This dark force, is indeed the definition of devious. This has all led to Van Sack, fully embracing the mysterious. So on with the Easter hunt, for this chirping solo artist. Of course he picks time of the night where this would be the hardest. Chapter 5, Jiminy Christmas Where is that cricket, Jiminy? He looked his right, then left, up and down. But nowhere could Van Sack find the source of the sound. He continued to look around, look around, and around. But little old cricket was simply nowhere to be found. Van Sack thought to himself, these things weren't so bright. As not finding little cricket is what brought him delight. After all, it did seem he gave that little cricket a fright. So Van Sack decided to quit and pack it in for the night. As he walked in the house continued chirping in his ear. And he thought to himself that Mr. Cricket is nowhere near. Then upon his remembering last year's sounds of crickets. Even when you're not listening beeps will resonate for minutes. So knowing already, for these chirps to be unnatural. He decided to look up some information that was factual. The first article uncovered, popped up something of all. It was a formula for chirping that had been made into a law. Simply add up the chirping counting up to 14. Then add 40 and the precise temperature will be seen. So he did that and it came to 68 plus 40. So 108 degrees it must be out, oh lordy. It wouldn't reach this temp on the hottest summer day. Let alone in the middle of the night during the month of May. So just how accurate is this law supposed to be? Upon researching some more precision is within one degree. So what was the temperature outside this night you may ask? 
48 degrees cooler, they must be having a laugh. So one degree of precision of a law studied over a century. It's here when Van Sack knew this to be an important record of entry. Not to mention five nights in a row Van Sack would go out and peek. And this same little cricket, would be chirping all week. And believe it or not he stayed in the very same place. Van Sack began to wonder if this critter was from outer space. But there is one more little tidbit about crickets you need to know. In order for males to chirp, many more weeks must they grow. That's right crickets aren't meant to chirp till the very end of July. Please what will it take everybody for you to start asking why? Chapter 6, A New Hope. Super planets and moons, and ringing in the ear. And to think this is all happening in the very same year. Liquid crystals and mist, indeed blanketing the skies. You need to recognize truth despite the abundance of lies. Record species of birds not migrating south this winter season. As well lack of snowfall, well now you all know the reason. Record shattering warmth, record celestial illumination. Can't you see these are indicators of enhanced levels of radiation? I don't care if these are the worldly are from the twilight zone or Mars. How long will this go on before taking back what's rightfully ours? Perhaps it is this dark force who is to learn most of all. Realizing their hearts have somehow shrunk, two sizes to small. Our world is calling, as it's so much in need. We all have within us, the power to be freed. Around us, beside us, within us a friend. Cosmic companions will be with us till the end. I suppose in the end you will find this to be real or a delusion. Or even thinking deep realizing it's all the same, it's illusion. But even if you find the information present to be far-fetched, you need just but move this knowledge into memory to be etched. If you simply define this information, too hard to believe. If you don't wake up no worries Van Sack still tricks up his sleeve. With awakening individuals growing daily to stand in his place. This is the true meaning of being part of a unified human race. So I hoped you all enjoyed, that brief moment of rhyme. Perhaps enjoying sipping back on a vodka tonic with lime. After all it is important to take a moment to let loose. Even during poor renditions, of good old Dr. Seuss. The end. For now. So there you have a glimpse into the remarkable 13 month journey of Mr. Van Sack, and again it's not necessarily important that you believe any of this, but a matter of using this information to continue expanding your own discovery of truth. As further events and experiences unfold, as further knowledge is gained, call upon this information to bring sense to what will undoubtedly be a time where sense will be hard to find. If you look at the landscape a year ago when Van Sack first came out with all of this, we were not experiencing record-breaking temperatures to the extent the past 12 months have been the warmest ever on record, we were not experiencing record-breaking illumination of celestial objects. Record numbers of bird species were not neglecting to migrate south during the winter season. Ski resorts were not sitting empty due to a complete lack of snowfall. Skies were not illuminating prism effects along with fluorescent bright pink and orange around the world. Mass people were not experiencing a faint ringing sensation in the ears. He had never heard of a reptilian. He had never filmed a UFO or an orb. He had never even heard of a chemtrail and understood next to nothing about liquid crystals and their polarizing effect on electromagnetic frequencies. He never had military craft circle over his home let alone on a daily basis. He had never heard of Jordan Maxwell before, let alone his research which led Jordan to an understanding that the human race was being scientifically mutated by an otherworldly presence. Heck Van Sack was still somewhat dismissive of alternative theories around 9-11. Now take a look at the experience, information, and footage he is sharing, filming some of the most remarkable footage of the paranormal and unusual including orbs, chemtrails, military, geometric crystal formations, holographic images including the supermoon, all the while drilling into the precise detail and underlying science about another worldly presence and how they are executing a plot to irradiate the human race. This stuff couldn't have been scripted any better. In short just over a year ago Van Sack was still quote unquote, living the dream, an individual with a postgraduate degree in technology, rapidly climbing the ranks of upper management within one of the largest technology companies in the world, 
performing numerous executive speaking engagements at a multitude technology summits. The success in his career was matched with a thriving and diverse social aspect, a world traveler enjoying the many fruits of life. But during all of this deep down he knew something just wasn't quite right, and at times a darkness of seduction and subconscious suggestion was even manifesting from within himself. For years he battled this from within, recognizing the need for all of us sometimes to take a step back and take a deep look at the world we live in, seeking out why it is constructed the way it is, where the many suffer so that the few can thrive, and seeking a better understanding of who we are deep down to the core underneath the piles of garbage, that over time have disconnected our path and God-given right to connect with our inner self and seek out true enlightenment. And throughout these disturbing spiritual battles he understood the extreme uniqueness of his situation, accepting himself to the fullest, forgiving himself to the fullest, loving himself to the fullest, in which despite quote-unquote, dancing with the devil, if doing it all over again he wouldn't change a single thing. And this is not because his actions and decisions had been perfect, far from it, but it is the culmination of those experiences, bouts of misjudgment and all that had brought him to the level of self-awareness he had achieved, and he understood that the key to establishing a connection with the Divine Presence was reaching within oneself. Van Sack is fully aware the influence that Christ has in so many people's lives, and although Van Sack fully recognizes all institutions of power and influence have been compromised by this dark force including those of religion, there is no implication being made that Christ did not exist or that Christ isn't a path to salvation but you all need to understand it's not a matter of simply waiting around for a being to return in order to be saved, nor is it a matter of pushing others towards simply subscribing to a belief set in order to be saved. Van Sack has seen so many times in the comments to his videos, quote, just put your faith in Jesus Christ and you will be saved, end quote. Christ is indeed a path to salvation, but this is achieved when Christ manifests within oneself. This quote-unquote, Saviour, has been, and is already here within all of you. The teachings of Christ are very important but they are just that, teachings. It's not a matter of waiting for Christ, it's a matter of becoming Christ from within. Van Sack fully understands there to be a Christ, who willfully embraced unimaginable pain and torment for the spirit of others. A tortuous journey indeed, literally persecuted by his peers for simply sharing knowledge of the Divine Spirit teaching others how to unlock their true potential. All the while allowing his love and compassion to wipe free any blame or guilt placed upon the masses who had fallen victim of demonic deceit, unknowingly arrogant and ignorant in their words and actions. Christ understood that it was not a matter of waiting until one passes to experience heaven, that we are all eternal beings in which it is up to each and every one of us to manifest our own heaven or hell from within. And even during the countless lashings he took, willfully and literally crucifying himself so that others could be saved, he recognized and appreciated the privilege it was to be in this position, in which despite each lash he took he wouldn't change a thing. Allowing others to learn from his knowledge and experience, having the opportunity to establish the same level of faith, as he, in the Divine Presence, and his commitment to all of you never wavered. I want you all to please put utmost consideration into this, a combination of literal, physical, and metaphorical. Think about this as if it were, Deep Thoughts, by Jack Handy. And it is at this very moment in time where Van Sack is fully appreciating the teachings offered by Christ, continuing to endure through seemingly endless lashings from this world and beyond, willfully tearing apart his ego, personal and professional status in the eyes of his peers, facing indescribable levels of ridicule, rejection, labeling, suppression, personal invasion and intimidation, all the while embracing a sense of indescribable privilege to be in this extraordinary position, and to share his ever-growing compassion with all of you. Don't you see, it's not about waiting for Christ to return. It's about manifesting Christ from within, which has been a most precious gift from the Divine, given to each and every one of you. And even if you are not a follower of Christianity it makes no difference, as neither is Van Sack. Christ is a representation of the Divine Spirit, and when one reaches full acceptance and faith in oneself, the Divine Spirit will reciprocate that acceptance and faith onto you. And when the Divine Spirit has as much faith in you, as you do in the Divine, 
miracles can happen, as you are witnessing now. So there you have it, and Miss Emma is getting hungry. Time for some good old fish and chips. Let me leave you with a taste of good old English humor. What is that, Van Sack? You mean you really want me to say this? Van Sack would like to bring you more context as to why Chapter 3 was titled, Megasaurus and Lycolotopus. Oh bloody hell, ah well, here it goes. What do you call prehistoric reptilian homosexuals? Let me repeat, what do you call prehistoric reptilian homosexuals? Megasaurus. How about prehistoric reptilian lesbians? That's prehistoric reptilian lesbians. Lycolotopus. Megasaurus. Lycolotopus. Ha 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 ha. Until next time, and please do take care of yourselves and of each other. Emma.